we have the Battles of the Nine in the Tars. Oh. Sorry, yeah, the Tars versus Reds game. Um, Reds yeah, versus McDermott. Now, let's run us through it. Look, this is an interesting one. Both of these guys were left out of the Wallaby squad. Um, Albert the Brain asked us on Twitter, he said, can you talk about Tate McDermott's tackle success rate or lack thereof since it, it is brought up with the Lolliseo Gordon stats, which we'll touch on as well. You can see both of them in this match, um, the difference between the two. We, we've got Gordon making 11 tackles with 92%. We've got Tate making three tackles from four, so 75%. So clearly Gordon doing a lot more in D. Harry, you had a bit of a theory as why well, you thought that was. Yeah, I, look, I just think that um, the Reds' loose trio of Liam Wright, Fraser McWright, and uh, Harry Will Harry, uh, Harry Wilson, um, they're just young, energetic back rowers that have huge tackle sats. So I, I think that is probably tactical from the Reds where they're trying to hide McDermott and make him keep him fresh for attack so he doesn't need to make the defensive plays. I think... You know, Gordon, Jake Gordon's obviously a hell of a lot more physical as a player, but I think it's tactical. So it's it's harsh to completely judge Tate on that, particularly on one game as well. Yeah, we have done um some stats as well. On, we'll, we'll we'll touch on in a second about um all the halfbacks. Um, I think Nubum can can run through that in a second. But we had two try assists to Gordon compared to to none for Tate. Tate had four tackle busts compared to Gordon's two. Uh, he made 66 to 47 passes as well. But in terms of the season stats, Nubum, um, the, the three halfbacks probably everyone wants to know about is Tate, Gordon, and White. Um, yeah. Can you run us through some of those stats? Yeah, well, Tate for the season so far is on um, 77%. So that's 40 out of 52. Yep. Um, Gordon is at 83 so lightly higher, slightly higher at 73 out of 88 tackles. So that's one in every 10 minutes, which is actually, yeah, pretty pretty decent for a halfback. We want to do less tackling, the better. Yeah, and, and Tate does one every 15 and 15, a half. Yeah, yeah, 15 and a half minutes. Um, and then White as well, obviously the preferred halfback for the Wallabies um, at 80%. For the year with 43 out of 54 tackles so yeah it's interesting yeah. stats gordon actually has the highest tackle percentage of, the, of them all at the moment but um yeah it, it's interesting well white's obviously played less minutes but he um he makes a tackle every nine and a half minutes as well so i mean white and gordon are definitely getting a lot more involved in d than than we see tate but i mean I mean, they've, they've both got pretty good back rows around them, but I, I do agree with Harry's point that that Reds back row is doing a lot of that dirty work, and it might mean that McDermott's just not needed as much in in that sort of field. The passing stat's interesting as well. I think it's probably interesting in that it's not interesting. <laughs> you know, the, the, this game, Gordon 47, Tate McDermott 66. If you actually look at the stats across the season, Jake Gordon has the most passes of any uh, halfback, 593 passes, an average of 59.3 a game. Tate's in third, 550 passes for 55 a game. But really, mm -hmm. all the halfbacks that play big minutes are around that on averages. It's just that they've played probably less games. Finlay Christie, 62 a game. Brad Weber, 60 a game. Anari, 51. Roy Gard, 53. So Mitch Drummond, 54. So that seems to be about the benchmark. And although, yeah, it says that, I think in this one, I, I don't know the possessions, possession stats, boys, maybe it's reflective of it, but the stats are probably just low purely because of the amount of opportunity he had. And uh, yeah. they're, they're pretty status quo in terms of how many passes off the deck the halfbacks are getting this year. Yeah, the Reds actually had 54% of the overall possession, but they had 60% of field territory. So, we, I mean, you see Gordon put in some kicks. They've had a little bit less ball. So that probably adds up roughly to what you, you're seeing there. Maybe a little bit more passing still involved with McDermott, but nothing significant to read into. I know I know we haven't done it, boys, but it'll be obviously, it'll be nice to see what Ryan Lonigan's doing, just obviously given that he's the second choice halfback in the Wallaby squad right now. Compared to these, um, compared yeah, to I think, these I think his problem, I think Ryan Lonigan's problem is that he's just not getting enough game time to really of be course. reflective of, of any of that kind of thing. Of course. Um, so I, I, yeah, still, I still second, 
still second choice at the moment, which is really interesting from, well, I think yeah. from our, I don't I don't think he should be. It's got to be one of these guys, to be honest with you. But like I, mean, um, I can tell you his tackle yeah. success for the season is 79%. So it's around the same kind of number. Yeah. And that's off 397 minutes, and he's making a tackle every 8.6 minutes so he's he's making the most regular tackles but he's played the least minutes which can can play a little bit into that and it's always in the back end of, of the match as well when he's fresh um but look I, I don't reckon he's the second half back I, I reckon uh he was in there because he's been doing well off the bench and maybe fitting a role that Eddie wants but I, I wouldn't be surprised if we see Eddie actually look for that experience um and, and it won't necessarily then be him yeah, it could, go, it could definitely go either 